If there are a lot of negative people in your life, don't look at them. Look at the energy that you are creating to attract them. Don't look at them. Look at yourself. What are you doing to draw those people? Because if you are surrounded by negative people, there's a part of you that's willing to tolerate that. Birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. Unconsciously, unconsciously, you will pick up their ways, you will pick up their habits, you'll pick up, most importantly, their attitude about life. If you're around cynical, negative people all the time, you will become cynical and negative. So you got to watch yourself. Many of us are living out the lives of other people, living out their conclusions, living out of their consciousness. I've had to do a clearing in my life of some people whose energy I realized was not supportive of who I wanted to be in the world. And I recognize that there are people who are not going to take responsibility for their energy. So I now have to take responsibility for the energy that I allow to be brought into my space. Align yourself with powerful people. Align yourself with people that can encourage you, people that can empower you, people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from. That's very important. See, if you have people around you that can contribute to your growth, when I wanted to become a speaker, I joined the National Speakers Association. I wanted to be around the Dr. Norman Vincent Peels, the Zig Ziglars, the Dwayne Dyers. I wanted to be around people that were doing what I wanted to do. What I know is that you cannot continue to move forward in your life to the level and level and level that you need to be if you're surrounded by energy that brings you down, that sucks the life force from you. So not only are you responsible for the energy that you bring, is what I learned, you're also responsible for the energy that you surround yourself with. Huge, 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 huge. And everybody who's watching me right now, I know that you know this is true. There are some energy suckers in your life. <laughs> Just literally taking the life force out of you. And you will never be able to do and be who you're supposed to be in the world as long as you continue to buy into the energy suckers. Positive influence can have an incredible effect on your life. But so can negative influence. Both will take you somewhere. But only one will take you in the direction you truly wish to go. It's so easy just to dismiss the things that influence our lives. The man says, I live here, but I don't think it matters. I'm around these people, but I don't think it hurts. I would take another look at that. I've got a good phrase for you. Everything matters. Now, sure, some things matter more than others, but everything matters. Everything weighs something. So you've got to keep checking to find out whether associations are tipping the scales toward the positive or toward the negative. It doesn't hurt to look, right? Ignorance is never the best policy. Finding out is the best policy. People around us can keep nudging us off course a little at a time until finally, 10 years from now, we find ourselves asking, how did I get here? Those subtle influences need to be studied carefully if we really want our lives to turn out the way we've planned. Now on this major point, let me give you three key questions to ask. This may help you to make a better analysis of your current associations. Here is the first question. Who am I around? Good question. Make a mental study of the major people with whom you most often associate. You've got to evaluate everybody who is within the circle of being able to influence you. So, major question. Who am I around? Next question. What are they doing to me? That's a major question to ask. What have they got me doing? What have they got me listening to? What have they got me reading? Where have they got me going? What have they got me thinking? How have they got me talking? And how have they got me feeling? What have they got me saying? You've just got to make a serious study of how others are influencing you, both negatively and positively. Now, maybe the influence of all those around you is okay, but just ask yourself, it doesn't hurt to ask, who am I around and what are they doing to me? Now here's the final question, is that okay? 
Maybe the people you associate with and their collective influence is okay. But then again, maybe it's not. All I'm suggesting here is that you take a close and objective look. Everything is worth a second look, especially the power of influence. You want to begin to get all the toxic people out of your life. See, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot of energy to reach your goal. It takes a lot of emotional, mental, and spiritual energy to reach your goal. So there are two kinds of relationship, nourishing relationships and toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships are the relationships that inspire you. They motivate you. They bring the best out of you. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. These people are bad for your health. Toxic people can run your blood pressure up. One apple can spoil a whole barrel. One negative energy drainer, energy drainer can spoil your whole life. I know people whose lives have been ruined because somebody wasn't good for them. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. Got to get them out of your life. See, a lot of people put up with a lot of foolishness because they don't want to die by themselves. Make a list of who you communicate with most and ask yourself the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Is it helping me to grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Do they bring out the best in me? Do, do they inspire me? Do they encourage me to develop my greatness? Do they make me stretch? So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship. Perhaps you've heard the story of the little bird. He had his wing over his eye and he was crying. The owl said to the little bird, you're crying. Yes, said the little bird, and he pulled his wing away from his eye. Oh, I see, said the owl. You're crying because the big bird pecked out your eye. And the little bird said, no, I'm not crying because the big bird pecked out my eye. I'm crying because I let him. Hey, it's easy to let influences shape our lives, to let associations determine our direction, to let persuasions overwhelm us, to let tides take us, to let pressures make us. The big question is, are we letting ourselves become what we wish to become? If you're a person where all your friends come to you with their problems, that's because they see something in you. You're more balanced and stable. But you got to remember this old saying, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. You've got to upgrade your friends. It ain't nothing bad. You just got to upgrade people in your life. But if you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. You cannot be the go-to person in the group. You want to begin to get all the toxic people out of your life. There are a lot of bridges in our life, right? A lot of things in our life, a lot of people in our life. And sometimes it's family, sometimes it's friends, sometimes the people closest to you, sometimes it's strangers. But there are always people in our life that leads us back to something that's not good for our life. I want you to think about this for a second. Maybe it's not now in your life. Maybe it's a point in time in your life where you had a lot of bridges. And sometimes that bridges you. Like, let's be real. But you had a lot of bridges in your life. Bridges mean connections and relationships that are leading you to a lesser you. So I want you to think about this right now. I want you to think about people in your life that aren't bringing to your life. And I don't mean they have to bring something incredible. But sometimes we have people in our life that bring nothing but drama, nothing but gossip, nothing but rumors, nothing but low self-esteem, nothing but low integrity, nothing but negativity, all these things. And we choose to keep these bridges up in our life. And I want to just tell you this. It's just facts. And you got to know this. The longer you keep bridges in your life that need to be burned, the more you prevent your life from building the bridges that need to be built. Some of us on here, listen, it's, you were created incredible, but some of us on here have believed the lies. We believe the lies that people have told us. We believe the lies how people treat us. We believe the lies what this world has given us, and we live a lie our whole entire life. Most of us on here, if you're in this place, you are not living the life that God gave for you. You are living the life that other people created for you. You're living the life that pain created for you. You're living the life that negativity created for you. You're living the life that all these things have created for you. Now when you look at yourself, you don't even
even recognize who you are because you kept so many bridges in your life when I get it. Trent, it's so hard. Trent, you don't understand. Trent, I, I've been around these people so long or had this job so long. Let me tell you something. Don't let the history keep you in the misery. Don't let the length of the friendship keep you in a friendship. That's terrible for your life. Like, yeah, it comes to a point. I'm always not always talking about, oh, get rid of people, get rid of people. But I know when you keep toxic things in your life, you're going to feel toxic. If you decide you want to be rich, all you got to do is start. Why not? Who going to stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Ain't nobody rich in this family. Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. He showed it to you. Listen to me. If y'all don't do nothing else, write everything you imagine down. Write it all down. Pray about it and watch what happens. Energy drainers, get them out of your life. See, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot of energy to reach your goal. It takes a lot of emotional, mental, and spiritual energy to reach your goal. And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. I want to talk to you today about connecting with the right people. Your destiny is too big to get there on your own. God has already arranged certain people to speak faith into you. He's placed in your path people to inspire you, to challenge you, to help you grow and accomplish your dreams. But the reason some people never reach their highest potential is because they never get away from the wrong people. Everyone cannot go where God is taking you. You've got to connect with people that understand your destiny, people that appreciate your uniqueness, people that can call forth your seeds of greatness, not people that are always pushing you down, telling you what you can't become, never giving you their approval, no matter how good you do. Life is too short to drag people along. If you will get the wrong people out of your life, then God will bring the right people into your life. And some of you, the only thing that's holding you back is your inner circle. The people that are closest to you, they're with you, but they're not really for you. You're constantly having to persuade them that you're okay and convince them to get on board. You're spending all your time and energy on someone that doesn't understand your destiny. Your time is too valuable to spend it with people that are not 100% for you. It's not the quantity of friends that's important, it's the quality of friends. I would rather have two good friends that I know are for me a hundred percent than to have 50 friends that are only for me 80 percent. There's no way I can help myself. There's no way I can help the people who deserve my help if I'm keeping things in my life that's making me feel helpless. You have to guard your heart. You have to burn every single bridge that leads your life back to destruction. You have to burn every single bridge that leads your life back to negativity. You have to burn every single bridge that leads your life back to low self-esteem. And the more that you don't know who you are, the more that you don't tap into guarding your heart because you're letting people stump on your heart, you're letting people take, uh, take advantage of your life, the more you're doing that, then you're not gonna have confidence in yourself and you're gonna believe the lies that people have told you. Like straight up. You have believed the lies that someone else has told you. You let a broken person break you. You let a person that don't know how to love break you. You let a person that don't know what loyalty is break you. Am I telling that you have to have a perfect relationship or friendship? Absolutely not. Mistakes are going to be made in this life, but the same mistakes shouldn't be repeated because when you repeat the same mistakes, and this is as a personal message too, when you repeat the same mistakes over and 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 over again, it is not a mistake. It has become a choice. Someone is choosing that action over and over and over again. You need to evaluate who's on your team, who's speaking into your life, who you're giving your time and energy to. In other words, who you eating lunch with every day at the office, who you're talking to on the phone so much. Are they building you up or tearing you down? Are they inspiring you to go further or are they telling you what you can't do? No, don't spend your time with people that don't make you better. Some of you don't realize how much that one negative influence is holding you back. You don't know how much more you would accomplish 
how much more you would grow, how much more you'd enjoy life if you just make necessary changes. There are two kinds of relationships, nourishing relationships and toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships are the relationships that inspire you. They motivate you. They bring the best out of you. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. These people are bad for your health. Toxic people can run your blood pressure up. One apple can spoil a whole barrel. One negative energy drainer, energy drainer can spoil your whole life. I know people whose lives have been ruined because somebody wasn't good for them. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. They aren't good for you. You've got to get them out of your life. Everybody cannot be a loser. Some people have to be successful. So in, me, in my reality, I'm successful. So I hate when they use that, oh, let's be realistic. You never did this before. You never did that. Blah, blah, blah. Come on. They can't see from themselves, so there's no way they can see it for you. Think about that, guys. If these people have never been successful, how can they, how can you really expect them to support you and want you, you know, to get to that next level and be successful? They never saw it for themselves. They never had it. So just keep that in mind when talking to friends and family. You need to make sure the people in your inner circle believe in who you are. They celebrate your gifts and they're pushing you further, not holding you back. And some of you today, if you don't very kindly and politely show someone the door, they're going to keep you from becoming all God's created you to be. Well, you said, well, what if I hurt their feelings? What if they keep you from your destiny? What if they keep you from accomplishing your dreams and making a difference in our generation? I can't think of anything worse than to come to the end of our life and realize we have not become what God's created us to be. And a lot of times we think, I know this person is not a good influence. I know they're keeping me from growing. But if I make a change, I may not have any friends. I may be lonely. And yes, you may be lonely for a season, but you never give up something for God that He doesn't give you something back better in return. If you'll make the change, God will not only give you new friends, He'll give you better friends. Friends that you don't have to wonder, are they for me or against me? Friends that don't try to manipulate you into who they want you to be, but they celebrate you and help you become who God's created you to be.